to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm presenting to you from beautiful Budapest in Central Europe. I'm hoping everybody has had a good start to their weekend, is staying safe and healthy. In this class, we're looking at speaking part three, mastery. We're going to practice our communication. This is a speaking class, students, so make sure to speak and repeat. Okay, I'm just writing it up here to remind you to do that throughout the lesson. I will be looking at your responses, correcting you, giving you feedback. Make sure to follow along. Hi, Tito. Hi, Abhishek. Nice to see our members. Hi, Cool Deep. Hi, Kyber. Nice to see our regular students and new students as well. This class is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic English and IELTS help. Check us out there. And for the general version of the exam, please check us out at gieltshelp.com. Now, I know many of you have already signed up on our websites, and I just want to show you a really cool feature uh, that you can use for free on the website to help you improve your speaking. So our academic website looks like this with the blue background you can click that big red button to join the premium package the general version is like this with the green background the gltshelp.com again click that big red button to join there and um, when you're on the website you have a my student account if you click the green button you can create a free account and then at the top here you can go into your my student account now it's a little bit bright because of course the website has lighter colors for better use. Oh, I seem to have lost my internet, so just give me two seconds while I refresh that page. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna show you something really cool here. All right, so um, there we are. So this is your My Student account here. And in your My Student account, hopefully, yeah, you can see that now, I'll zoom in. So you have tons of materials in your My Student account. You have uh, computer-based practice exams, uh, full online course, uh, several uh, PDF study plans. You have over 100 hours of video lessons. And uh, here is something that we just upgraded. So hopefully everybody can see this. Uh, this is the live IELTS speaking here, and I'm showing you this because this is a speaking class, okay? So when you're in your My Student account, you'll see these two buttons. You can uh, book a speaking interview practice, and also this is the one that I want to show you today because this is what we improved here. So if you click on that student partner speaking, you will get a pop-up. Yeah, it's, there it is. So you'll get this pop-up that says, uh, by clicking, I accept to start speaking, and you agree to our agreement, making sure that you are respectable and behave nicely, and then you accept that, of course. And then you'll see a new open window uh, where it says live speaking practice. Now, when you log on, I'm using an admin account here, you'll see other students in this window. And then you have the option of text chat, you have the option of audio chat, and you have the um, option of video chat. So here you can actually find other students and then uh, choose the type of chat or the type of communication that works for you, and you can practice your live speaking there. Cool, right? And in the next one or two days, we'll have a whole bunch of uh, practice speaking questions that you can click on to choose as well. So, oh, somebody just, yeah, LaPooj just joined in. I can see that. LaPooj is like, oh, I'll check that out. <laughs> so there's LaPooj coming into the chat. So now if I want to talk with LaPooj, I could actually click here, but LaPooj, I guess you're watching. I'm not going to do that right now because I have to teach the lesson. But uh, if other students join in, then you'll see other students coming up as well. Thank you, LaPooj, for jumping in to help me show that. Um, so yeah, so you have video, uh, audio, and then text as well, okay? So you can, uh, yeah, there you, hey, LaPouge, nice. Okay, cool, so again, remember students, you have to just log into your My Student account, 
at aehelp.com or at gildshelp.com. So at gildshelp.com, if you log into your My Student account, it actually links between the two websites. So you can find academic or general students. Uh, it doesn't matter which website you're on. So that's really cool. They're linked together. And then uh, again, you have to click on this uh, student partner speaking option and there'll be other people in there. Uh, if you don't see anybody in there when you log on, just keep your window open because people will be logging in and out all the time in the day, okay? All right, and again, students, this is free. You can use that for free, okay? So even in the free account, you can use that. You don't have to pay for it, okay? It's 100% free. Of course, if you like the course, the products, buy the premium version, it's worth it, but you can use that one for free. Okay, cool, so that's it for that one, okay? Um, is that clear, students? Any questions about that speaking option on the websites? Okay. So Rajveer says, oh, that's cool. Okay, so if anybody has questions about that, uh, just send me um, an email, adrian at aehelp.com, okay? And uh, that's where you'll find other IELTS students like yourself looking for partners to chat, okay? All right, so um, today, speaking part three, practice, here we go. Uh, part three. Part three is the most challenging part of the speaking interview. You will be asked some specific questions following the cue card part two, okay? And again, to get a high band score for speaking part three, uh, you have to take a few very important steps, okay? Can students tell me what you need to focus on in part three? So I know we have a lot of regular students and I've given you a lot of strategy and advice in past classes. So what do you need to really pay attention to in part three? to get those high band scores. Uh, Fahad, if you have a question about our application, just send me an email and I'll help you out, okay? Okay, so Abhishek says for part three, so strategy. Okay, so for part three, uh, make sure to include clear explanations and examples for your answers. Absolutely, you have to practice that and you have to make sure that you do that. I agree, Abhishek, okay? Yeah, Renu says the same. Focus on explanations and details. Uh, Roshni says for your explanations and answers, uh, use quantities as well. So use quantities. Quantities and numbers, it's kind of the same, uh, to give clear ideas. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, Rajveer says, students, also remember to link your answers with task two. So we don't have the task two here, but link them. Kuldeep says paraphrase, absolutely. So paraphrase parts of the question in your answer. Absolutely, very good. And as Rajveer says, link your answers to, to your uh, part three response. Definitely. Very good. Okay. Shirojidin says, pay really careful attention to the questions like uh, plurals, singulars, uh, the grammar as well. Okay, Bumi says use different kinds of conjunctions. Okay, Violet says it's a little bit bright. All right, Violet, I'll listen to you. If it's bright for everyone else, I'll darken that up a little bit. Yeah, Elena, the grammar should reflect the grammar of the question. Okay, so reflect the grammar of the question, which means if the question is present perfect, Use present perfect in your answer. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. 
So uh, let's get into it. Let's start going through some of these questions and then uh, we'll uh, expand more on these strategies. So here we go, uh, students. Maybe I'll increase the font size a bit for you as well. So it's a little bit, a tiny bit bigger, a little bit easier for you to see. All right. So uh, the... Uh, examiner will say something like, okay, that's the end of part two. Now we will continue with part three. For part three, I'm going to ask you some more questions related to the topic of part two. Let's talk about safety equipment. Okay. So first question, what are the most common types of objects that people use to stay safe on a day-to-day -day basis. Now here, you should visualize, try to think of as many scenarios as you can and give me a nice full sentence answer. So go ahead, students, answer this question for me as best as you can. So what are the most common types of objects that people use to stay safe on a day-to-day -day basis? I'm really curious what you will come up with. Roshni says the most common types of items that individuals utilize to protect themselves are sunglasses and scarves to save themselves from the suns and mosquitoes while traveling. My father used a face mask three times a day while traveling through the Sahara Desert. Very good, Roshni. Nice. Okay, so answer explanation, example, Roshni, with paraphrasing, good grammar, nicely done, okay? Flower Sun says, in my opinion, to stay safe, we need to prepare uh, little objects like a sharp pen, a uh, sprayer, or many keys that we can carry around to protect ourselves in unpredictable situations. Flower Sun, you have some good ideas there, but I'm not exactly sure why I need a sharp pen. You mean like self-defense if somebody attacks me? If that's what you mean, Flower Sun, you have to explain that to me clearly, okay? Humble Human says, nowadays as a pandemic is widespread over the world, wearing medical masks on the mouth is obligatory because it saves people from bacteria or pathogens, right, Humble Human? Good, okay. Ferdovs, Nabiev, our member, says, Nowadays, the most popular goods to be healthy are face masks, gloves, and special glasses, as these items can save people from infection. Very nice, Ferdovs. So you're using context. Um, absolutely. Muraz Baraki says, A few important tools which come to mind right now is gloves, masks, glasses, and protective boots as cap as well, and sanitizers like these days due to the COVID-19. Individuals frequently use gloves. Marasa, good to see you in the class. Long time no see. And that's a really nice answer as well. I still haven't seen the most common one, but we'll see if anybody comes up with it. Elena says, well, it depends on the nature of work people do. Like a uniform for firefighters saves them from potential hazard. Uh, ropes for rock climbers, a welding helmet, or goggles. Um, yeah, uh, again, Elena, it's what are the most common types of objects that people use to stay safe on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? So, uh, in my opinion, these days, because of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, The most common types of paraphernalia that people use. Paraphernalia is a really nice technical word for useful tools. Paraphernalia, okay? Types of paraphernalia that people use to stay safe are masks, gloves, glasses, and hand sanitizers. I know 
I have all of these with me today. Aside from the current situation, people will also use equipment like helmets while riding a bike to protect themselves from brain injury. All right, so some nice answers. Here is my answer. Uh, as long as you're nice and fluent, you can give a long answer like this. If you're having difficulty being fluent, then keep your answer a little bit shorter so the examiner does not interrupt you. Okay, here we go, students. Let's uh, practice this. Repeat after me. So, what are the most common types of objects that people use to stay safe on a day-to-day -day basis? In my opinion, these days, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, the most common types of paraphernalia that people use to stay safe are masks, gloves, glasses, and hand sanitizers. I know I have all of these with me today. Aside from the current situation, people will also use equipment like helmets while riding a bike to protect themselves from brain injury. All right. Now, in part three, there are always follow-up questions, so be ready for these. You don't have to rush. You don't have to answer super fast. That doesn't improve your fluency. Make sure that you have a good idea before you begin speaking. Otherwise, it's awkward. Okay, here we go. So, which of these is used more than any other? So, which of these is used more than any other? Which safety equipment is used more than any other? Let's see what you come up with, with for this one. So Abhishek says, in my opinion, these days, wearing helmets while uh, riding bikes and a seat belt while driving a car is the most common object used for people to stay safe. Really nice answer, Abhishek. Those are the ones that came to my mind as well. I'm glad that somebody finally came up with the seat belt, okay? I would argue that people have seat belts on still even more than face masks, okay? Renu Sharma says, I think that the most commonly used equipment these days is the mask, which protects us from viral infections like the coronavirus. Sure, Renu, that works to each their own. It's a good opinion. Kevin Bui says, I believe surgical masks are used most often because from the warning issued by epidemiologists, they are must-have items to guard our body, uh, our body's weakest spots. Mm, I don't know about weakest spots, Kevin Bui. Epidemiologists, sorry, students, the correct pronunciation is epidemiologists. It's a nice long word, Kevin, epidemiologists. Okay, uh, Flower Sun says, I think keys are the object that many people use in most situations because everyone has keys to enter or exit and lock their house when they go outside to stay safe when they're asleep. That's a very clever answer, Flower Sun, and it's original. Those kinds of answers can get you really high band scores. Okay, very good. So if I had to say... This is a good leading expression because it shows your ability to use conditionals. If I had to say, or if I had to choose, I would state that seat belts are the most commonly used items to keep people safe as these are mandatory and everyone puts them on just in case of car accidents. I read somewhere 
that seat belts save an average of 20,000 lives per day. All right. So here we go. Repeat after me. Uh, which of these is used more than any other? If I had to say, I would state that seat belts are the most commonly used items to keep people safe, as these are mandatory and everybody puts them on just in case of car accidents. I read somewhere that seat belts save an average of 20,000 lives per day. All right. Good job, students. Nice use of uh, vocabulary. Epidemiology, by the way, students, is the study of the spread of diseases and viruses, if you're wondering what that tricky word actually meant. All right, um, here we go, students, with the next question. Which types of problems can occur if people do not use certain types of safety equipment in dangerous situations. Now pay attention, this is a conditional, if people do not use. So this is that case where you want to reflect the grammar and paraphrase it, okay? So provided that, given that, in order to, these are ways to paraphrase conditionals, okay? So give me some nice paraphrasing here. Let's see what you come up with. Kamal Sharma, it's a good answer. I'm going to correct it in real time, okay? So if people neglect the use of such safety equipment, like a person who is infected with COVID-19 and doesn't use a fat face masks and walks around the house without protection, may infect others and cause injury and illness. Charlie Sen says, there are many problems that can occur, like if someone doesn't use a helmet while riding a bike, they may suffer severe brain injury in case of an accident. Nowadays, if someone uses a face mask, he might, if someone doesn't use a face mask, Charlie, they might get infected by the coronavirus. Not affected, Charlie, infected, okay? Julio Baez says, unfortunately, accident probabilities increase if personal protection equipment isn't used in hazardous situations, such as wearing steel-toed boots on a work site. A person may lose their toes or even worse, their foot. Right, Julio Baez? So um, let's see. What I can come up with here for you. So, um, when people neglect, I like that word that was used by one of the students. So, when people neglect the use of protective gear, they not only increase the risk of injury but also the severity, severeness, severity, <laughs> let's go with that one, of the injury, such as when a person or a construction, let's be specific here, construction worker does not put on steel, toed boots, they can easily injure their foot and lose some toes in the process. All right. So, Again, answer, explanation, example. That's what we're going for here. Be visual. Uh, repeat after me, students. So which types of problems can occur 
if people do not use certain types of safety equipment in dangerous situations. When people neglect, neglect means that you're not paying attention, so you don't do it. So when people neglect the use of protective gear, protective gear is another way to say safety equipment. So when people neglect the use of protective gear, they not only increase the risk of injury, but also the severity of the injury, such as when a construction worker does not put on steel-toed boots. They can easily injure their foot and lose some toes in the process. Uh, steel-toed boots, also called work boots most of the time, but more specific, it's when the toe part of the shoe has steel in it. So if something heavy is dropped on the toes, then uh, the toes will survive, okay? Pooja says, when people do not worry about their safety, it not only affects their life, but also poses an equal risk for other members surrounding them. Like... A person can be a potential, potential carrier of the COVID-19 and risk infecting others. Very good, Pooja. It's a nice message as well in today's circumstance. So here is the follow-up question, and I think, Pooja, you answered it nicely as well. So how does this affect society? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. So how does it affect society? Okay. Again, think of an answer, explanation, example. If you can't come up with the ideas right away, you can buy a little bit of time by saying this. That is an interesting and an important question. Please allow me a moment to come up with a good idea. And you can use that. You won't lose marks. The examiners will know if you're fluent. Okay. So Karen Veer says, neglecting safety equipment can be severe in many cases to individuals as well as society as a potential carrier can transfer germs to people around them if they're not wearing a mask. King Al says, as with the COVID-19, it can be transmitted by contact with people unless folks uh, cleanse their hands and face. They may transmit the invisible virus to others unintentionally and increase mortality rate. Okay. Elena says to 15 other, oh, okay, Elena, I guess you have a part earlier there. The chat moves along quite quickly sometimes, students. So Elena Mori says, for instance, if people don't maintain social distancing and use protective personal care, they can uh, infect others. As per the coronavirus, researchers say that one individual spreads the virus to 15 others, there is a high mortality rate um, because of this. Elena, good. Uh, careful with your word repetition, okay? Ferdovs Nabiev says, this can cause communities economical social problems as government close all spheres to stop the spread of the virus and many individuals lose their job and business. Good, okay. So... How does this affect society? This is an interesting and an important question. Please allow me a moment to think and come up with a good idea. Not being cautious and using safety equipment can create both physical and economic danger to others in the community. When a person suffers brain injury in Canada, 
because they are not wearing a helmet while riding a bicycle, this will cost taxpayers an average of two million dollars in health care for that individual individual's lifespan. All right. And this is a little bit of an interesting fact coming from uh, my university education in Canada. So I thought I'd share that with you in the answer as well. So how does this affect society? That's an interesting and an important question. Please allow me a moment to come up with a good idea. Not being cautious and using safety equipment can create both physical and economic danger to others in the community. When a person suffers brain injury in Canada because they are not wearing a helmet while riding a bicycle, this will cost taxpayers an average of $2 million in health care for that individual's lifespan. That's actually a fact, students. So uh, when you're not wearing a helmet, especially in a country where the health care system is supported by taxpayers, that's the result. Just imagine how many people have to work how many hours to pay for that person's care. Not only did they destroy their own lives, but they're putting a huge burden on the community as well. That's why in Canada, riding a bicycle, you have to have a helmet or you get a $150 fine if you don't. All right, uh, next question. Let's keep going here. Uh, some nice answers. I'll keep looking for different students for the answers. So keep giving me your answers and comments and make sure to speak and not just write. How has technology improved safety equipment? Give me a nice answer for that one. So how has technology improved safety equipment? Roshni says it has improved the equipment tremendously since the advance of technology has invaded industries such as testing machines for COVID-19 not only help to detect the inf uh, infection, but also save thousands of lives. Yeah. Now, students, uh, let's say you're in the IELTS exam and let's say that you get this type of question for part three. Okay. I recommend that you don't just get hung up on one idea. So this is an important strategy. Um, don't just be stuck. It's good to be specific, but don't be stuck on one concept. And that's one of the reasons that I'm uh, using these questions today, because I think it's easy to get stuck on the idea of coronavirus with safety equipment. So this is a really important tip. Okay. Um, it's important to be specific. But it's also important to be dynamic, okay? So this means use several different good ideas for your answers. And I see this happen often where students get stuck on just one idea and then they keep pushing that one idea for all of part three. And they start to make more and more mistakes. Not only that, but they start to become very repetitive in their answers and re repetition is not good. Okay. So be dynamic. So if you started with safety equipment, masks, gloves, hand sanitizers, that's okay. But then for later questions of how does it affect society and so on, maybe switch to helmets, seat belts, uh, safety boots, okay? So other kinds of safety equipment. You'll get a better score, obviously because that's going to show broader lexical resource as well. Is that clear? That's a really important tip. A lot of students tend to get stuck. So being detailed doesn't mean stay with the same idea throughout all of your answers, okay? So use several different good ideas 
Okay, so be detailed, but use different ideas. Okay, so medical masks, sure. It's okay, but also use seat belts, helmets, work gloves, okay, and other ideas that come to mind. Think about the kitchen. Think of how many different kinds of safety equipment we have in the kitchen as well to help keep us safe. Okay, Murasa says, yeah, okay, that makes sense. So don't get stuck on just one idea, okay? Yeah, uh, Natalie, a burglar alarm. So something to keep your house safe, right? Your belongings, where you live, yourself. Very good, okay, for technology. Uh, Maksud says, technology has drastically improved the quality of protective equipment. Maksud, it's protective equipment. Protective is the adjective such as security cameras and fingerprint readers to provide safety in the home. Uh, just yesterday, I installed some security cameras around my house to keep my family and myself safe. Very good, Maksu. Notice the couple of corrections there. So not protection equipment, but protective equipment. Okay, very nice. Show the present perfect, students. So Abhishek says, another example nowadays, uh, the automobile industry has started working on uh, driveless cars, not only to save the lives of many people, but also increase the efficiency uh, of operating costs. Good, Abhishek. Careful not to go off topic. Niha says, while starting a car, an icon of wearing uh, gloves and a seatbelt comes on to remind uh, drivers to stay safe and keep others safe as well. Yeah, it's interesting. The gloves one, I think that's for uh, hot regions in the world. We don't have that one in Canada, but I've heard about that one. That's interesting to wear gloves. Yeah. Boomi says technology has improved devices immensely, not only in security, but also in protection, such as using cameras in banks and wearing fire resistant clothing while cooking. Very nice, Boomi. I love how suddenly a lot of you are getting really creative, which is great. You're going to get a better band score for that. Okay, so that's fantastic. That's what you want to do. So stay specific, but also at the same time, be dynamic. That's definitely a good strategy for improving your band scores. Okay, so... Technology has had a major impact on improving protective equipment over the past several decades. Uh, ones that come to mind immediately are airbags which are deployed during an accident to save the lives of passengers and drivers, as well as emergency brakes on trains to slow quickly in case of obstruction on the rails. All right. Yeah, those are the ones that came to my mind immediately. All right, here we go. So students, uh, again, lots and lots of examples for this. How has technology improved safety equipment? We're using present perfect has improved and we're using paraphrasing. So technology has had a major impact on improving protective equipment over the past several decades. One that, ones that come to mind immediately are airbags, which are deployed during accidents to save the lives of passengers and drivers, as well as emergency brakes on trains to slow quickly in case of obstruction on the rails. All right, now notice also here which are deployed. So going into details, one way to go into details 
is to use adjective clauses. Okay, so make sure to use adjective clauses as well. Now, um, the follow-up here is can you give examples? If you get asked this question, uh, you can give even more examples. So you can say, sure, aside from these examples that I just uh, provided, another few that pop into my mind are, and then give a few more, okay? So when you get asked for examples, if you already gave examples, give some more examples, okay? Diksha says, Diksha Malhotra says, there are multifarious of examples nowadays. Students continue their studies and get help from modern gadgets. Um, farmers use machines to cut crops. Okay, Diksha, not just examples of technology, but examples of technology for safety. Okay. Um, Charlie says automatic fire alarms in case of fire, airbags, seat belts in the vehicles. Okay, good. So, um, yeah, JK Biss, pop into my mind is an idiomatic expression that means come to mind. Okay. So pop into my mind here. It's like pop, pop, <laughs> pop into my mind, pop, pop, sorry, pop into my mind, pop into my mind. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go on to the next topic here. Here we go. Uh, so you're doing a good job. You're moving along nicely. And then the examiner says, let's talk about acting responsibly, acting responsibly. Here we go. Uh, what should people do before engaging in dangerous activities? So give me a nice full sentence answer for this question. What should people do before engaging in dangerous activity? Okay. All right. Kevin... Bowie says, assuming the array of activities uh, in this case are legal, I think people indulging in extreme sports like going ziplining need to wear protective gear and undergo training to minimize risk. It is advisable to buy insurance in advance so that medical expenses can be covered in times of mishaps. Very nice vocabulary, Kevin. Excellent. Ferdovs Nabiev says, before entering into hazardous actions, people ought to prevent themselves from injuries by wearing helmets during cycling, face masks and gloves during a pandemic, like I'm wearing a face mask to be safe in this COVID-19 outbreak. Very nice, Ferdovs. I like it. Answer, explain, example, real life content, high band scores, say that fluently, Clearly, you'll get a band nine. Elena says, nowadays, due to the technological advancements, it's very easy to find victims of cybercrime. Various cybersecurity protocols have been implemented, like end-to-end -end protection. I think maybe that's for a previous question, Elena. Okay, Rajveer says, in my opinion, people should do some planning um, to engage in such incidences to eradicate the chances of severe accidents. Like people should participate in fire drills to know about various tricks to save their lives in case of a fire. Very nice, Rajveer. I made a couple of adjustments there to clean up the language. Okay. Elena says, in my opinion, people should never engage in perilous activities. If there's no other way than taking a risk, they should inform their family members and friends. So inform others. All right. Omar Ashraf says, well, they must take the circumstances in mind. They must also wear some safety equipment. They should also plan what they're going to do. Very nice, Omar. So you have three good ideas. 
uh, give explanations and give some examples, okay? Kaur Deep says people should be confident and think positively, okay? Why? Yeah, confidence is definitely a good advice. I think lacking confidence is one of the most dangerous approaches in a risky situation. Shiro Jidin says, just before trying extreme activities, people should check their safety equipment to make sure that it's working as expected. Yeah, that's good advice as well. Check your safety equipment. Venita Rishi says, thinking critically all of the pros and cons before indulging in harmful activities is advisable. Taking proper training before performing some sort of perilous uh, form of entertainment, such as scuba diving or deep sea diving, is highly advisable. Okay, Venita, good. Uh, careful a uh, little bit with your word choices. Again, notice how I adjusted what you wrote there. Uh, students, of course, you can always check the time for how I'm adjusting these. So um, there are a few key steps people should... Uh, consider before embarking on risky activities like rock climbing or scuba diving. Firstly, it is advisable that they do their research to become familiar with their surroundings and also to make use of available safety equipment like checking to see if there are sharks in the water and using a helmet and rope while scaling a cliff. All right. So, students, here is my answer for this one. Of course, there are a lot of good ways to answer these questions. This is just one of them. Notice how it's visual, detailed, and again, using some different information. So here we go, repeat after me. What should people do before engaging in dangerous activities? There are a few key, key steps people should consider before embarking on risky activities like rock climbing or scuba diving. Firstly, it is advisable that they do their research to become familiar with their surroundings and also to make use of available safety equipment, like checking to see if there are sharks in the water and using a helmet and rope while scaling a cliff. All right. So again, visual, answer, explain, example. Notice how I'm not using for example or for instance, okay? Is everybody seeing that? Does everybody see that when I give an example, I very purposefully do not say for example or for instance. Can everybody see that? In the whole speaking part three that we just did so far, I did not use for example or for instance even once. Okay, there's a reason for that. IELTS examiners don't like to hear that. They get scared that the um, student will go off topic. Okay, so don't use for example or for instance. IELTS examiners get scared that you're going to talk too much and go off topic. Okay, so just give the example, use like or as, or just go right into the example. Okay, that's what's important. All right, students, um, we have a few more questions here. Why is it important to do this? People often say that we are responsible for each other, not just ourselves. Why is this? Do you agree with this statement? How can society encourage responsible behaviors? So I'll leave these three questions for you to practice. And again, remember, viewers, one place that you can practice this 
is by going to your My Student account at either gieltshelp.com or aehelp.com. When you log in, then uh, look for this button in your My Student account, the um, Student Partner Speaking button. As soon as you do that, and if many of you do that right now, you'll find each other very, very quickly. Then you'll be in this place here, and uh, you'll see lots of other students in here. And then you can choose text, audio, or video as well, okay? So you'll have kind of like a Skype or a WhatsApp type situation, but of course you'll know that everybody who's in there is looking for IELTS speaking partners, okay? So check that out on the websites. I'm quickly showing you that because before many of you leave, I really want you to try that out. And in the next couple days, so there's Abhishek right away. And I guess Abhishek is probably waiting for somebody else to join in and be like, hey, just call me, let's chat. Now, of course, students, um, be careful with your personal information. So this is designed specifically for IELTS speaking. Be respectful with each other. Uh, and coordinate with each other, okay? So it's free use, you don't have to pay. We just saw LaPouge join in there, and I'm going to uh, leave this now. Anyway, you can find each other, so try that. Um, students, that's it for today. I will be back on Wednesday. Uh, you can join our premium IELTS packages at ahelp.com and gieltshelp.com as well. I hope that all of you enjoyed this class. Keep up the good studies. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Stay strong. And be smart. Much love to all of you from Budapest. Bye for now. See you Wednesday.